what I'm going to do here is I need to uh, shift this log, roll it so that the heart cracks on both sides are level. That's at, the heart cracks? See, this is the heart crack through here. Oh, yeah. Generally, most logs will have heart crack. And I want to cut that. I'll just make a mark so you can see it easily. Yeah. I want to be able to cut that out when I start cutting slabs. I don't want it going through all of my slabs. So I've got to roll the log. So both sides have that heart crack lined up level. Works well. How are we doing? I can't roll it this way because I'd be going uphill. It's too big a lot right now. Ah. So you'll be rolling it until it's vertical or until it's all or the way over? Horizontal, so quite a ways to quite go. Quite a ways to go. Mm. So this log is about two and a half feet diameter? Almost 30 inches. And it's an eight foot log? Well, probably nine feet. I usually cut mm. about a foot extra. So this is how the pyramids were built and rocks were moved. <laughs> yeah, if I had a big piece of machinery, it would move pretty easy, but <laughs> just me. Yeah. It probably weighs a couple tons. Wow. So the heart cracks, one on each end, they're both slightly different to each other. They're kind well, of twisting. It probably twists. Uh, the log twisted when it grew, probably. Yeah. So you'll kind of find the average. I'm finding the average. Basically, I want two four-inch thick slabs out of this to make a big bench. And so, uh, fortunately, the heart's way down here, so I'll probably get my two slabs here easily. Okay. The sides off with my chainsaw, because I don't need to do all the milling with my uh, Alaskan mill with that, because this is all going to be exterior, so I don't want any sapwood in it. Uh -huh. If it was going to be interior, I would rip the whole thing, because then you get all that width, but the sapwood really rots quickly outside. So you'll cut the outside off and turn it into firewood? Yeah. Just like here. Just like there. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Okay, I should be able to see enough of that now to get somewhat of a straight line. How often do you have to sharpen the saw? Uh, well, as long as you don't hit dirt or anything, uh, with this kind of work, not too often, probably every uh, just four or five times I make a, a cut. Yeah. Uh, it's just so that if the teeth are pretty equally cut and the same angles and sharp, the saw doesn't start veering to one side. It'll make a cut that's pretty straight. Mm The other advantage of uh, ripping the sides off or peeling the bark off yeah. is when you go to use your Alaskan mill, it's a lot easier to cut because the bark really clogs up 
in where your cut is. Mm. So I won't have any bark on this when I go to make my cut. It'll be really clean. Yeah. You have your foot under there when you're cutting down, that bar is going through. Can you see it? Yeah, yeah. You cut the end of your foot off. You gotta yeah. really watch it. Yeah. When you're doing this kind of stuff. Yeah. I'm sure it's happened before. Good, eh? Okay, looks good. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the bark off because I want to set my rail to set up my Alaskan mill. You don't have to do that, but it makes it a lot easier to set that to set it up. Yeah. And to nail it on because you got to nail it onto the log. Yes. A little harder through the bark. So what exactly is this bar you're using? Is what? The bar. Uh this, it's just a bar that's older than I am. I got it from my father. Uh -huh. It's probably 70, 80 years old. Uh -huh. It's just for, it's uh, originally, I think, was used for uh, setting fence, po fence posts. So you put your post in and then you tamp it down like that uh -huh. around the post. Uh-huh. Multifunctional. Oh, yeah. Multi like a must-have. Yeah, I, I use it leverage. Yeah. It's just great for leverage. I couldn't have moved this log otherwise. Yeah. That makes it peel off like butter. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, the log's been sitting here for a few months, so it gets a, sometimes it gets a little easier to take off. Sometimes uh -huh. this stuff is really hard to take off. Yeah. Okay. What I'm doing now is I'm uh, putting this rail that I've made. It's straight and each side is parallel to each side on the rail. So uh, if I get this set up correctly, I'll cut an even slab off of the log with my mill. Uh, so what comes into uh, play now are the lines I've made. It means that I can measure down to this level line that I created earlier mm -hmm. on each side of my uh, guide here mm -hmm. and then on each side over there and then I'll be able to cut down to the line with my Alaskan mill. So this, you call this a board? What do you call this? This thing? is my guide. Your guide. Did you make, you use this for all your jobs or you made it for this job? Oh, I, I use this for all of my milling jobs. Okay. I made this a number of years ago. Okay. I have another piece that goes onto it and I can cut 25 feet long. Oh. So this is 12 and a half inches on this side. And I have uh, 12 and 3 eighths on this side. So see, I can take a shingle. And shim it up a little. Oh. And try to get that, that half. Uh -oh. They're now at 12 and a half. Perfect. So after I get it all e equal on each side, I'll nail it to the log. So on this side, you're also bringing it to 12 and a half inches? Right. Yeah. 12 and a half inches to the line from the top of the board on each side of my guide and each side of the, each side of the log. Mm -hmm. So now I'm at 12 and a half here and 12 and a half here. Now I have to check the other side because I pivoted it, it may have changed. Mm -hmm. Twelve and a half inches from the top of the guide in all four positions on both sides of the log. So now I'll nail it down and I can uh, use my Alaskan mill. Great. So when you nail it down, are you nailing through those shims on purpose? Through the shims so they stay in place because the Alaskan mill really vibrates a lot and they vibrate out. Mm -hmm. So the nail goes through the guide, through the shim, and into the log. Mm -hmm. And you just feel to make sure it's sturdy. 
So uh, you had holes there in the guide before, so you kind of use the same holes over, over and over. Sometimes, it just depends on where I'm nailing, it doesn't matter. Yeah, okay. Now, the one thing I nail the other side, I, I eye it just to make sure it's parallel, and that's the advantage of having these two, uh, two sides, mm. and they're very close to parallel. I could raise this maybe a sixteenth of an inch. Uh -huh. So if you want a, a flat slab, like how are you determining whether it's completely parallel and flat? Well, I'm eyeing this edge, get backing up and eyeing this edge and see that it meets that edge. Ah, so it's not tweaked in any way. So it's not tweaked in any way, right. Okay. And I'm just trying to raise this one edge about sixteenth of an inch right now. I have the two sides parallel now. Great. And if this was a longer log, if it was uh, say a 12 or 13 footer, I would put shingles in the center here ah. and I would nail it there too. But this doesn't have any give in this short distance. So okay. I only need uh, two sets of shingles and nails. It'll keep it accurate enough. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the part where I was measuring the 12 and a half inches from the top of the guide yeah. on the snail to the log. Yeah. Because now what I want to do is I want to add up 12 and a half inches here before I put that top board on. Well first of all let's this is the Alaskan mill. This is the Alaskan mill. You can buy setups uh, that are aluminum go uh, bars that, and adjustable but they get a bit pricey and you can make your own pretty easy. Yeah. This is uh, my Husqvarna that has a 42 inch bar on it, I drilled two holes in it and put in a ready rod bolt uh -huh. that's bolted and stays in place, bolted uh -huh. on both sides uh -huh. with uh, lock washers and then you just drill this so uh, counter drill it so that it sits on the bar. And steps thing, steps like a step? Yeah. Yeah. So now I have all these different sized blocks and I need to add up to 12 and a half inches. Uh. So I'm at 10, I need two and a half more inches. And so I should have Okay, there's 12 and a half. So I'll just repeat that on this side. So is it a particularly strong saw? Well, it's a good saw. It's an old saw. I've had it for uh, over 20 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's held up really well. Uh, it's, it's a big saw. Yeah. So, so this is what an Alaskan mill is. It's not like a it's a chainsaw with a setup on it. It's a chainsaw with a setup on it. Sometimes you have two chainsaws, mm. one on each side. Just depends on how how big a cut you're making and how big your saws are. You don't have to have this big a saw. You can have a smaller saw. Mm -hmm. You're just going to be cutting smaller pieces of wood is all. Mm. That will cut right down through that line that I have on the log. I used to use just a, a, a 2 by 12 for my guide. This works a lot better, but a 2 by 12 will work. And this is about how much? Well, this is an H structure. H structure. Oh, you just use a plain board, a 2 by 12 I just used a plain 2 oh. by 12. But and the H, uh, struc H structure sits much yeah, better. Yeah, this is like a beam structure, so mm -hmm. it's a lot stronger. So, when I go ahead and make this cut, I'll use a gas mask along with eye and ear protection because I'm sitting right next to that motor and the fumes come right up at me and they're pretty toxic so it's a good idea to protect yourself from it. Yeah. Why more so than with a regular chainsaw? Well, 
when I'm cutting with the regular saw, my head's quite a ways away from the uh, saw head, and it, uh -huh. there's a breeze going through, uh -huh. and so the wind is really taking it off. I'm not getting it, but with this, you're really sitting right, right there you? with mm -hmm. it. Okay, so now with the setup I have, this board will run down the top of this, and I'll be cutting right along this line, and it should be on the other side where the line is too. Now I get it. Because everything is parallel. Now I get it. And I did it with a level. Now I get it. And that's why I needed to shift the log so that the heart crack I was cutting out was the level too. And then so this board will ride along the top of that board. Yes. While you're sewing. And the bar will will cut right through that line. Right. So we'll see if it does. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, when I first put the board on, I put it on backwards, and there's a reason that I have it longer on this side. Uh, just for safety, I like to have the board go past the end of the bar. It's too easy for someone else to walk up and walk into that bar when, it's, when oh. the uh, chain's running and get cut really badly. So right so, now, we're looking at how it's going to be while you're cutting. Right, and so if somebody walks up, they're going to get to the board before they get to the, oh. the chain moving because that'll cut through you pretty fast. Yuck. Okay, well I'll get the tray saw started now. And so it just hangs on, balancing on the wood. Yep. Good. Come out in the line? Yeah. Good. Very impressive. <laughs> okay, so now I'll remove the nails and uh, then we can cut from the surface that I created. We don't need this anymore. I like how you um, put the shims in. That yeah. makes sense. That, they're as thick as the, as the blade. Yeah, the blade. if you don't put the shims in, it drops down on the bar that you're cutting with and mm -hmm. it'll bind your chain. Mm -hmm. What you gonna make out of this big block of wood? Uh, on my pond where I have the koi, I'm going to take two slabs and make a uh, circular bench area. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> nice. Break your foot. I can't lift something like this. How heavy do you think the top slice is? What's that? How heavy is the top slice? Uh, well, gonna... this top slice, I would have to guess, is 500 pounds. Oh, I mean, this is green wood. Yeah. It would probably break your foot. <laughs> if it landed on it, it would break your leg. Yeah. So you lever it off. Oh, yeah. I can't lift it off. I can't lift that. It's too heavy. So now I'm going to uh, go for cutting a four inch slab and so now I just change my block setting to four inches. Perfect. 
and they should both be the same. Yeah, so we got four inches now. So you have to be pretty handy to want to do this, to be able to do this. Oh yeah, it's quite a bit it's of work. It's not for everyone. It's not for everybody, but on the other hand, where can you go buy a uh, 21 inch, 4 inch slab that's 8 feet or 9 feet long of redwood that's all heart yeah. to cut a bench out of. Yeah. Uh, so the rest of these logs over here actually, I'm just going to be cutting into material like the uh, 2 by there and some 4 by because I'm going to be replacing a deck that's uh, 20 years old. Uh, so that you could just go out and buy. <laughs> Right. Well, I've got the material here. For big slabs. Uh, so it uh, just makes sense to use it because I had to take the trees down anyway. So a lot of your house, you would have made the boards? Actually, no, I fell the trees, but I had a mobile dimension mail come. Ah. That would be just too much to do. Yeah. That's a, I, I had a... Uh, 27,000 board feet of material cut up. Wow. So that was like having a look like a lumber yard. Right. I wouldn't be able to do that. Yeah. The most I've cut up at any one time is about 3,000 feet, and that's a lot of work. Yeah. Okay. Now I can cut off of this flat surface that I've created for uh, my next four inch slab. So you don't need your board anymore? Don't need the board. You only need it the first time. For the guide. For the first guide, yeah. Because mm. now I, if you look at this, it's a really nice flat surface. I mean, it's really nice, straight and flat. Super plain. Is it it planes. Yeah, lovely. yeah. So if you look down there, that really planes now. Yeah, lovely. So you won't use these shingles until you're actually working along. You've just placed them ahead of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah just get them in, my, in place. Yeah. Pretty good. It's quite dangerous there. I mean, you're using your, your foot. It could be, you have to be very, very aware of what you're doing. Well, it helps uh, push it down there because you are, you're actually pushing it. Um, and it's uh, kind of hard to reach over and push with your arm the whole time. Oh, I know, yeah. Your leg's a lot stronger. Yeah. Hard okay, work. we got a slab. Beautiful. So I'll take it off and put it on some stickers that are parallel with each other and so that it dries fairly flat. There we go. Nice board. Nice board, huh? Yeah. <laughs> And ready for another slice to be taken out. Yeah, ready for another slice. And then I should miss. See, I'll, I'll miss the crack mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. on both sides. Wow, it's sure looking different around here. Yeah, I've almost got it all cut up. The uh, Finished up cutting these logs. There's just a little bit more to cut. 
but some of my piles are very close to where the log is, so I'm going to be uh, moving this wood to another location, and then I'll finish cutting up that one log there. Ah, so it's only about a foot away from your stack of wood. Right, and I need wow. quite a bit of room for the saw because the blade extends, you know, a couple feet. So maybe you've got like 30 or 40 boards here since we were last with you? Oh, yeah, at least. Yeah, I cut up a, this time a combination of 2 by and 4 by material. Ah. Uh, it, I just cut up uh, according to what my usage is going to be. Yes. So I have to replace a deck, and uh, so I'll need some 4 by material, and uh, then a lot of 2 by. so that's how I decided how to, what to cut this time. Nice. So on top of the pile, there's like a thinner board. Yeah. Uh, what I do often is I cut out the uh, center where the heart goes through because uh -huh. often there'll be a, cro a crack through that and it makes the wood um, not usable. Uh -huh. So I'll cut, like I cut just an inch out here and... Uh, it's just not a very usable It's not very usable so uh -huh. I just cut that out because I don't want that crack to go into the uh, next piece. Like this was the next piece I cut mm. and it's a four by mm. and I don't want that crack going into it. So mm -hmm. then I just use it as the cover board. So I see there's a little crack there in the end. Yeah, That's well, the heart crack. Here you can see it a little more clearly. These are a couple more that I'm not using right now cover boards but see this crack? Mm -hmm. See it goes diagonally vertically in some areas and kind of diagonally. Oh yeah, you're making the wood pretty useless in that area. Yeah. Except so, for a cover board. Uh, yeah, a cover board good and I might you recover a little bit of the wood but not much. Yeah. And then sometimes you notice that one's even, it's one inch everywhere. This one goes from about two inches to one inch. Uh -huh, like a triangle. Yeah, sometimes the uh, crack that goes through the heart, which is typical in most trees, you'll get that. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, it's not going uh, parallel with my cuts, mm -hmm. the way I laid out the log. Mm -hmm. uh, it twists, it, it'll twist as it moves through. Mm. And this one twisted a bit, so there was more waste on one side. Mm. So what I do is I just use my guide again uh, that I have right here when I get down to the heart crack and I set it up on it and then I can cut out uh, a shape that uh, I take more out on one side than the other, so I don't get that heart crack into the next piece of wood. Into your primary boards that you're cutting. Right. So now these cover boards, um, will you be able to use them later, or like what happens to them? If, like how many months will you leave these wood piles stacked to season? Uh, it just depends on what the usage is. Uh -huh. The deck, I'll probably use it in a couple months. Mm -hmm. uh, It'll dry some. It's not essential that it dries mm -hmm. because when you go to the lumber yard and buy redwood to build, build a deck, mm -hmm. it's wet. Mm -hmm. uh, it just depends on the usage. Right. The one thing about the cover board, though, is it does help uh, keep the, the top piece out of the sun because the sun uh, does make it crack more quickly and warp more quickly until so, it's dried to some extent. So you leave these board, these stacks of wood somewhere on your property out in the weather for a number of months. Oh yeah, with the yeah. cover board. Yeah. Um, yeah, see what happens is if, if this is exposed to the sun before it dries to some extent, yeah. this top part will dry before this bottom part too quickly. Mm -hmm. It won't dry evenly. Mm -hmm. And so that that means that part of the piece of wood is bigger than the other part. Mm. And so then it starts doing all sorts of weird things because mm. it's not dry, drying evenly. Yeah. Great. Yeah, so yeah. anyway, this is the project almost completed now. Almost completed, wow. And uh, ready for me to just uh, move it to another location. So these remaining pieces with lots of bark on them, they can become firewood? Yeah, all the rest of uh, the material that I've left, that I've cut from already, will become firewood, just mm -hmm. as the, I have stacked between the trees. And this is the one log here that's very close to the pile, so you'll shift the pile of wood and... Yeah, so I'll move the pile of wood out of here and then I'll, I just mm -hmm. don't want to double, have to double move it. So I'll move the pile of wood where it's going to go and then I'll finish up and mill this last log. Fantastic. Four buys. Wow. Well, it sure is interesting. 
Yeah, it's an interesting way to produce your own wood if you have it, uh, you know, the trees on your property and you need to uh, take them down. Yeah, yeah. Not, um, uh, not easy work. No, not easy work, but then on the other hand, you either are going to go to work and earn the money yeah. to buy the wood, yeah. or, you, or you do this and you have the wood, and yeah. you skip all of the in-between stuff. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. Great. Thanks. Sure, you bet. Go mill your own wood. <laughs>